Hello guys and welcome back to a brand new Valheim guide and this time we're going to be looking at my creative build in the Mistlands which is this wizard tower and we're going to be changing this. Yes in today's video we're going to be improving on all of this we're going to be adding decorations to improve the atmosphere and to make it feel a little bit more wizardry and also to cover up a lot of the wood that we've used but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So if you do find this video helpful do hit the thumbs up and if you want to see more don't forget to subscribe subscribe as well. What I've done with the build already is just get the general structure, the architecture built so that we can work around that and you can see basically how we've done that but also more importantly how we're going to decorate this build. And before we go ahead I am aware that that looks a bit like Sauron's tower at the uh, in the top left with the fire. As it stands we have a little area outside which is going to be where we have I guess a small little garden. This will be more for the atmosphere than actually cultivating and growing a, uh, a garden, but something that might look quite cool. And we will have the kitchen on the inside here. We'll need a storage area just in here, a living space, an area to make various spells and potions, uh, bear in mind this is a creative build so we won't necessarily be going down the route of having a brewery here. Maybe, maybe not. And then finally we will also have the bedroom as well with probably some teleports. On the other side we have a small area which is going to be for smelting magical items uh, which is linked to the main tower via this bridge and that is kind of the whole tour of the basic tower that we have here so the next thing that we need to do is work on this the first thing that we're going to be talking about is depth and you can see we've added a lot of depth to this by building off of the wall from the get-go this makes it feel less flat and makes it stand out more but it's also a great way to add detail it can be really easy to add depth and we've actually done this on the underside and the sides of the bridge here you can see how we've added some stairs to give it this arched or stepped approach to the bottom and on the outside you can see that we've layered it with the iron beams and also the core logs versus this particular piece of wall here which looks very flat and you can see how it doesn't really fit within the build so that's what we're going to be playing around with now looking at this section we have the archways for the door here and looks a bit weird having this section here just so like the same resources. So that's what we're going to start off with. We're going to grab the doorway. And then from here, we're going to grab our dark wood. We're just going to run this all the way down. We'll do the same up here. And we're going to do the same on the other side. Just bringing it all the way down. And now let's add something maybe in the center as well such as this wood detailing. Next, I'm going to play with this section here. Once again, we will grab our doorway and I am going to grab this middle section. And from here, we could, should we wish, play around with the positioning of this, but I'd rather use the normal wood. You can see already how much just a few little changes can really influence the look of the build. And there we are. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. You can see how we've made the separation and then added the detail in the center. The next thing that I want to talk about is windows. So I like to have a lot of these open areas, but when it comes to the very top, we have this massive space available to us and we could do something to, we could use this to create the windows, but I find they look a little bit plain. And so I'd rather place something in them. It could be something like this, but I tend to leave that for its own decorational purposes with wood. Another thing that we can do is is use the metal that we have available like so maybe we also want to add a little bit of glass to that i think it needs something on the bottom so i'm going to play around with this maybe we'll do the same with this which i used to do and we'll see which we prefer or if we can get that to match up somehow but definitely play around with clipping items into other items there we are that's not looking bad at all the next thing that i want to talk about is depth inside of rooms as well how you go about doing this really is up to you but what i tend to do is try to line up 
a beam along the side of the wall. And so we're going to run this all the way around. And the intention is just to add a little bit more depth, bring it in a touch. And we can do this along the top as well, should we wish. You can even do this with just these pieces of wood jutting upwards, should you wish. Maybe you want some decorational trimming around the top. You can do that with these uh, shutters as something that looks a little bit different because it obviously does have a different texture as well. And then we're just going to finish that off with the flooring so that it seals it off. What we need to do now is look at doing the flooring and maybe even the ceiling as well. So what we're going to do here, if we just fly up a touch, we're going to grab our floor now and we're going to just run one of these all the way across to the other side like so, and the next thing that we're going to be doing is grabbing flooring, whatever color we want. Maybe we want a sky color. We're just going to place this all the way around the room, trying not to cut too far out of the actual side here because we don't want this showing the outside. And you can see what we're doing is creating a textured ceiling for this particular room. And there you are. We now have a blue ceiling and we're going to match this this time with some flooring as well. But this time let's go with the red jute and we're going to be using this trimming uh, to make it so that you can't actually see where the ends are for the carpet. And voila, you have a lovely carpet and a lovely ceiling and a nicely trimmed room. This can also be used to great effect on the outside of your builds as well. And we've shown texture for the ceiling and also the flooring, but we can also use the curtains that we have to create various effects. So for example, if we go here, we're going to place them so that they are digging into, we'll even bring this down like so. And you can see how we've created a red segment of wall. A quick tip while you're doing this, if you want to play with the different banners rather than the curtains, you'll see that these start to flutter in and out of one another, which doesn't look particularly good. So if you want to avoid that, what we're going to do is just grab one of our item stance and we're going to place this inside under the banner roughly where we'd like the next one to be placed and then from here you can add this on like so and that will stop it fluttering through as you can see we've added a load of the curtains along the side we've done the green across the top the black along the sides then the red and then we're also using a little bit of the blue as well we'll probably add more as we go along but at the moment i'm really happy with what this is the next thing that i wanted to talk about is changing the materials now there is a bit of zed fighting going along here and the more carefully you place it the less you will have of the zed fighting but you can see here we've taken the signs turned them on their reverse side and then used them to change the texture of the walling around it which i think really works well. I'll show you how we do this now. So you can see we're going to grab our sign. We've taken the reverse side and we're going to place it. And then we're going to make sure that we place another one so that it's along the same line. And you can see how it's changed the uh, the texture and also there's no Z fighting there. Now, one thing to note, if you keep going down like this, you may have a point where you have a small space just below. So if we were to do it here, you're going to find it difficult to get the right spot because you need to place it on the back wall. So when you come to a lower piece like that, what I recommend is placing down the lowest section first and the top section. And then from that point, filling the inner part. And that's how you get the different textured wood on that. The next thing that I wanted to do here was to break up the bottom section a little bit. And so I thought I'd do that with the signs, but it doesn't look that good. So what I think we'll do is we'll add some wood, some core wood, just to break up the positioning. And maybe we can do some kind of trimming once again down here. I'm going to play around with this for a bit, but it, it comes to just adding little pieces, adding trims here and there to, to give more depth to the build and seeing what sticks. Failing that, finding something to hide uh, the, the section behind also works. But we're going to move on from here. I'm pretty happy with the outside for now, although I would like to do some work on this tower in a little bit. Firstly, what I want to do 
is focus on the kitchen area. But before we do, I thought, <laughs> just very quickly, maybe I should show you how we've done these crenellations. And it's quite simple, but I'm sure there'll be someone asking. What we've done is we've got these black marble plinths and all we've done is place that next to the wall where we want it. So we've placed a one on the outer wall and then clipped it inside the, the wall. And we're going to do that on the other side as well. And we're just going to repeat this all the way along. And that is how you build some pretty cool crenellations as decorations for your wall. With the outer section more or less done, let's work on the kitchen area. And I've already started adding in some kitchen crafting sections. And you can see we've added these walls here. I should probably talk how, how we've done these. You can see on the inner section, we've added these core logs. And the reason why we've done that is because if we grab our signs and you've got a mixture of depths on it, so we have these sections here, you're gonna find that your, your walls will be in different heights and you don't want that. So we created a inner wall using the round logs and then from there, we've placed the signs on top of them so that it's all flat. We're going to go ahead first and foremost here with a nice red jute carpet. Next, let's add some more kitchen stuff. So if we go to the crafting tab, we have the spice rack. Okay, we can place it there. I would like to have some kind of place to prepare food. I think that would be good. So let's build one of them now. We're going to build out. Let's grab our space, dig those in. From here, what I want to do is also add some under storage, like so. And we will be adding some decoration and some food to this in a little bit. Maybe we can have this as a little bucket. You never know when you're gonna need one of them, but we'll need to place down a forge. Oh, I wonder if we could blend that into the furniture as well with something. <laughs> we have our own little sink here. I'm pretty, pretty chuffed with that. And I'll add some cupboards up here as well, but we're going to skip ahead of that and I'll show you what we come up with once this is done. I think I'm ready to show you what we've done. So here we are in the downstairs kitchen. You can see that we've added some shelving above. You can see that the overhead is filled with food. We have food being prepared next to the sink. Obviously the fire roaring and various cooking tables, crafting tables associated with cooking next to it. We've got a mortar and pestle along with the fish ready to be gutted. We have a nice little oven and then we also have a, another little storage area along with some sticks for the oven and the fire. The next area where we have food is coming along quite nicely. We've got a little spot there ready for people to eat. We've got some lighting, weapons and shields, maybe stuff that the wizard has collected over the years. Perhaps he's skinning and doing art on a, a tanning rack, the horn of celebration. We've also used the mistletoe from the, the Christmas event. And then this little bookshelf, I guess, of various trophies that maybe he's pleased of, but aren't that special. We've done a bit of lighting as well. Oh, I should also mention we've added the paneling along the top and the, the middle section here, as well as you can see, a little bit of trimming as well, which I think really does nicely bring the build together here. And then we have our um, locks carpet as well. Last thing though that I want to do is if we go to this tab and we grab this, we're going to decorate the ceiling slightly differently in this one. It's going to be a, a slightly lower ceiling, but it's also just another way we can add a little bit of de decoration in detail that maybe you wouldn't have noticed at prior. So I'm going to do all of that now. There we go. I feel this really does tie the building together in this room. We're going to move on to the next room now. Ah, yes, this has to be the magical one. Let's do this one. Uh, but guys, before we get started, if you love showing off your fantastic builds to your friends in Valheim, there's no better option than running a dedicated server so that you can jump in along with your friends at any point. And with the game running 
running on a dedicated server, you'll save some frames. And if you haven't got one yet, I highly recommend low.ms, who we're partnered with. If you use the link in the description, along with my code, Total Eclipse, you'll get 20% off your first month. So what are you waiting for? Next, we're going to be doing the storage. So for this one, we're going to add, first of all, a little barrier around the outside so we don't fall off. And then we're going to use the, the core wood here. This will be for making our meads. So you can see we've got some horns there for drinking from our tankard and a couple of barrels. We've flipped two of them around. So this is the only one ready to be corked. And we've done a little section here for when we're maybe making our ingredients. But I'm going to play around with some storage spots here, and then we'll probably move over to there for the smelting area. In this section here, I'm building a wine rack and I thought it would be really nice to add a little bit of backlighting. Now, lighting can add a lot to the atmosphere, and we'll, we'll be talking about that once we've done all of the decoration. But we're going to be using these little yellow mushrooms that glow. But you can see how we're going to be using these stools to turn into a bit of a wine rack. And you can see how it's got a little bit of lighting in the background, just something to add a bit of detail to. I'm pretty happy with this as it's coming along. It's just a storage area. We've got things leaning against the walls. We've got uh, some, well, we've got our sword here, the wine rack, obviously. And then we've got these little storage crates. We've got the one underneath and then also these uh, little boxes of open resources, which I really like. And how we're going to do this is we're going to create a basic box using signs. And the plan will be to fill that in. But before we do that, we're going to place down these, but we're going to stack them on top of each other so they're slightly higher. And this is going to produce different heights for the various resources that we have here. From there, we're going to place a sign and just close it off. And there you go, you've got a little tiny crate. And if you want to do one of these larger crates, uh, we have done this with the shutters here, perhaps on top of here. We're going to hold down shift in order to free place them. And then we're just going to snap these into one another. And then on top of here, we will place a wooden floor. There you go, you have a little crate there. We're now moving on to, uh, I guess, Sauron's tower. Ah, oh, I hate that I've made it look like that now, but we're gonna keep it anyway. And now we're going to look at making a magical smelting area and I think this is going to be using the black forge. This needs to be placed on stone or something supported by stone such as the black marble that's beneath us which is why we've had to build it like this. We're going to do the same as before adding various smelting options here and trying to make it look as cool as possible. So we've been trying to add a bit more atmosphere here. We've added a little section that kind of brings it all together. What we're going to do now is to add more items to the various things that are being produced right now. So the way we're doing that, if we grab our on the furniture, these place stands, you can't place anything on these. Um, however, if you place a buildable down first and then delete them. Oh, well, that failed. Might need to place that slightly lower. We want it to be pretty much inside. Maybe like that. Okay, if that doesn't work, the next best thing is to stack loads of these on top of one another. And we're going to cheat it onto where we want it to go. Okay, and let's just build something, maybe a bronze mace, which looks all right from the side. I'm going to add a little bit of decoration in here because it's very dark. And then afterwards we will go to the top where we will do our magical resource collection, I guess. Entering in the smeltery area, this is what we've come up with. So we've added these. I would have liked to have had the green torches, but unfortunately the smoke's gonna fill up this area and we don't have a way of letting it escape. We've added this little banner here. We've also gone and added some wooden decorational support, well, some walls, I guess, cladding. On the opposite side, we've also done a similar thing with wooden cladding, but using the diagonal uh, wooden planks to create this 
nice little effect. But the next thing that we're going to go on to is to add the magical touches on the top. These points on the end really do kind of lend themselves to being placed a bit like that, maybe a bit more centrally. Makes it look a bit more evil though. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna do that. We'll also add some enchanting stuff, but that'll probably be in the magical spot over there. So something that you can consider doing on your outer walls is having the outer wooden trimming and then on the inside using the metal grates to just add a little bit of decoration to that. A little bit of detail. If the tower didn't look evil enough already, it does now. Just adding a bit of lighting to the build can really add to the atmosphere. Green is really good for something that you want to make look evil or red as well. But overall, I am pretty happy with this. We're going to move on now to the magical section, which is going to be the bedroom and then the, the wizard's area on the floor below. So what I'm doing in this room is rather than build on the flooring that we had originally, I'm building on top of that. And the hope is that it will give the magical elements of this room, the magic, like the artisanal crafting table, for example, a bit more command over the space. We're also going to add the signs again. And then here, I think, what I next want to do is add some more detail on this outer wall here. So we're going to grab our doorway once again, find a place to snap it to, and then we're going to need to grab maybe one of those. And we'll use this to build onto. We can place these, turn them inside out. We're just trying it out. We're seeing what sticks. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Let's add this all the way around and then we'll start adding the crafting tables. Let's have a look at the arcane room. So in here we have our artisan table. We have various potions and obviously all the foods that we need in order to produce the magic. We've added some color in the form of the flags. We've also added the torches, as you can see, and we also get extra uh, light from all the potions. So this room's pretty bright. And then over here we have our magical artifacts section, which is the, the special stuff that's been um, kept away from the guests that we may have downstairs. We've also done an extra large um, crate here full of the excess mushrooms. We have our arcane table and the mortar and pestle for grinding up the spices. The only thing that I would like to add is maybe a cauldron, but we don't really have room for that up here. Let's go on to the bedroom. The first thing that we have done here is to add a little chandelier in the center. I've had to stick them to the iron beams because they kept breaking. Uh, and we'll probably add some more along the outside as well. We are also going to need to designate an area here for money. So I want to find a way to kind of cordon this off without walling the whole thing. And I think we might do that with these uh, pieces. So I'm going to play around with this for a little bit and then we'll uh, show you what we've got. We've been playing a lot with this and you can see it's come a long way and I'm pretty happy overall. Uh, we have a little treasure area. Um, I would like to add just a, a little chair here, maybe. We have our little throne overlooking the mist lands, and as you can see, we're using the portal to give it a kind of rim. And then we've also added these seal breakers, and I realized they light up. And that gave me an idea to do a little magical area, have some runes to protect the area. And then in here, we've got our magical pieces of armor and then i'm also going to just to finish off throw some clothing onto here just so it looks a little bit more like it's lived in i'd like to add something along here as well some bedside tables and you can see how all of these tips that we've um, shown off today really add to the look and feel of the build. The last thing that we need to do, maybe I'll do it here, is just a little section for our magical staffs to be placed. Yeah, this will look nice. But there we are, guys. We have finished the build. I hope you've liked this. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you'd like to see me build next 
in the comments below. And of course, thank you goes to all of our amazing supporters, most notably our Solo Eclipse patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, Trebor, and Beowulf, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, the MN Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dashlom. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.